Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. All right, quite a show for you today. We've got some more just breakthrough technology people on the show today. First one is Gerald Kamishiong. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. CEO of Amarentus Biosciences. And uh, let me tell you something. These people are making big headway in uh, newer generation and protein misfolding re- related. And I'm not even going to try uh, to butcher this last one. But, uh, Gerald, welcome back to the show or welcome on to the show. Thank you for showing up. Thank you very much for having me. All right. My pleasure. Now, you've been in this industry for quite a while. You and your brother uh founded this company. Let me back up a little bit and let you explain what your company does, and then we'll walk right through all the moving parts. Sure, sure. So Thank this you. is uh, it's actually me and my father. So uh, so my background, my personal background, I went to Stanford University, graduated with a degree in management science and engineering with a focus on financial decisions. And uh, you know, that program uh, produced the uh, – the founder of Instagram it produced a, a, a lot of really good guys. Uh, but the focus there is really to combine technology and put it into a venture format where uh, capital can be gained to advance uh, breakthrough technology. Um, so, you know, my specific area, I got into the field of the biosciences uh, because of my father. My father is a, a senior researcher. He was a former uh, professor at McGill University in Canada. He ran two divisions for the U.S. government uh, while at the NIH, including uh, head of the neurotrophic factors group. And uh, his whole concept in science, you know, I grew up in the lab. His whole thought was that we could find a way to treat these mega important neurodegenerative diseases um, using cells that uh, support the uh, health of neurons. And so that's how we got into this. Uh, that's how I got into this. He's a, a PhD neuroscientist. And so um, the, the concept originally when we started this company was to take this, this platform technology that my father created, um, use, uh, use it to identify molecules, and we were successful in doing that, MAMP, and then use these molecules to treat uh, these diseases. So we, um, we were lucky to be successful in discovering the molecules. Um, this molecule was discovered back in 2003, and since then, obviously, just, just the whole landscape of the business behind uh, biotech has changed. So you know, biotech goes through these waves of you know, single asset versus uh, portfolio technologies mm-hmm. and, and portfolio companies. And so we've had to navigate through the whole world from moving from a, a single asset company, which we were when we started now, we're a very broad-based company, really still centered around this core technology and understanding of these neurodegenerative diseases. Great work. All right, now let me drill down a little bit on that. Are you saying that companies have gone from being very specific to, to b- developing portfolios? Is that the, the entire changing of the landscape of biosciences, or, or is there more to it that you want to bring out? Well, it goes in waves, right? right. So, um, you know, investors um, will say, you know, we really want to find one asset and really drill down on that asset. Right. And since money is, is what really drives the whole industry, um, companies end up, uh, you know, following the money and focusing on that. And, of course, you know, eventually a lot of these assets don't work out. The investors get burnt and they say, you know what, we want more than one shot on goal. Okay. And so what we've done here at Amarantis is we've, we've we, because we have a, a – a really strong scientific team. Mm-hmm. We've got a great deal of, of background and understanding in how drugs actually get developed in real life, uh, as opposed to you know what you drop on the board. Um, we've we've taken the approach of, of really focusing in on finding true breakthrough biology, uh, whether that biology is old and we're finally understanding what it does after several years of research, or whether that biology is new and we're on the cutting edge of what's just coming out. But the bottom line is uh, the technologies that we're developing each have multiple applications. So not only do we have an internal control, so if you know one of our technologies fails in one area, it may still succeed in another area. We have multiplicity because each one of the assets that we have has that potential. And we now have three 
assets uh, that we're developing that all have potential in more than one indication. Okay. All right. The, the, for for the generalized high level view, talk to us about the different diseases that you're curing, and then we'll get into the products uh, that you, that you're developing to cure these diseases in a second. Right. So so we're both in diagnostics and therapeutics. So we're both treating and trying to diagnose disease. Um, so that's that's an important note. We have a, a diagnostic division and a therapeutic division. Mm-hmm. In our diagnostic division, which is probably the easiest for, for your listeners to understand, we're developing a blood test, a simple blood test, to help you identify whether or not you have Alzheimer's disease. And, and that's really important because right now the standard, as I'm sure many people know, is uh, you show up at the doctor with some kind of uh, cognitive dysfunction, some complaint, or your spouse is complaining that uh, you're forgetting your keys or you're getting lost reasonably often. And what happens is you go through a series of tests, um, none of which are objective, and you end up having to come back for months and months and months and get more tests until after a body of evidence is accumulated in the clinic where they feel comfortable giving you a diagnosis. But there's still no kind of objective markers that that they're looking at to confirm that diagnosis. The blood tests we're developing is specifically tailored to use to identify specific markers that are relevant to people with Alzheimer's versus people that don't have Alzheimer's. So the diagnostic paradigm would shift from you come in and you get seen for months or sometimes years, and after several years of you know degenerating, they finally give you a diagnosis. We're hopeful um, that we will be able to give a diagnosis shortly after that first visit. Yeah, oh, when you say shortly, give me a ballpark idea. What do you What do you think? Does it take a month to to come up with the results, or a couple of months? Oh no, I, you know, hopefully a week to you know a week. You know, between the time the sample is sent off to the lab and sent back. Okay, that is relatively fast. Definitely. Now, it's not right. just for Alzheimer's. You 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 evaluate other um, like traumatic brain injury, chronic and traumatic, and I can't pronounce this. I'm on your website. Uh, Encephalopathy. And such. Uh, and- Encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. So, Thank you. Um, right. So, so that's that's in the research stage, uh, mm-hmm. but we do have uh, you know pretty strong reason to believe, especially with a lot of the evidence coming out of late, um, that there is uh, a biological relationship uh, between some of the underlying pathology of what's going on in Alzheimer's and some of the things that are happening in uh, in TBI slash CTE. Uh, just so everyone knows, CTE. Is uh, a lot of the condition is a condition that a lot of these football players have been diagnosed with, mm-hmm. uh, especially some that have unfortunately committed suicide. And so, you know, obviously, it's a huge need if you can pinpoint people that uh, are at risk of developing the disease. Um, you may be able to change, uh, you know, uh, habits. I.e., you may prevent them from playing football, or once they've had one or two or three head exposures, you may limit their exposure to further hits. So that's something that we're very excited about. It, it is early, uh, but we're collaborating with some of the best people in the world there at Boston University on that project. Oh, that's the great work. All right, now, w- what I failed to mention is that you've got, you're publicly traded, you've got a symbol, AMBS is the symbol on the stock. And uh, for some reason, somebody really likes what's going on with your stock because uh, from what I'm seeing here, the, the low in December has just gone straight up at a 45-degree angle and just a minor pullback. You move from $0.02 cents to $0.09. Cents. That's a big, big ROI for a lot of people in such a short period of time. Uh, what happened? Was, was there some recent news that had come out, some recent partners that showed up that made the stock go through the roof? Uh, well, you know, I... I... First off, I wouldn't say the stock's through the roof. I'm saying I would say that the market is starting to recognize, okay. um, you know, the, the fundamental technologies that we have. Well, somebody so, who bought um, it at two cents would be very happy with you right now. Oh yeah, so what, they have a lot of happy shareholders, uh, certainly. But um, you know, we we think this is this is just the beginning. So we, um, from a technical standpoint, you know, where we were. Um, we we were at lows for uh, technical reasons, which really had nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. Um, we were searching for a uh, an application of this core technology NAMP that will that's been the the rock, the center of the company for several years now. Uh, because Parkinson's, uh, while it's extremely attractive and the, and the science behind our molecule in Parkinson's is certainly quite elegant, and we believe 
very valuable. Just to, from a time to market standpoint, um, we felt as though if we could find an orphan indication where this technology could be used and get to market faster with less capital invested, it would represent a more attractive value proposition. So in, in August, we identified an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa as let's, an indication for MAMP. Gerald, let's and do this. Uh, Gerald, Gerald, let's do this. Let's take a break and then cover all of that on the next segment. Uh, we're about out of time. We've got to go to a commercial, but can you hang in there for a second for me? Absolutely. Okay, great. We're going to be right back with Gerald Commission symbol on this stock, AMBS. You definitely want to take a look at it. We'll be right back. Oh, and special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PUBLIC RELATIONS for all their PR and media support. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. I'm joined by Gerald Commission, President and Chief Executive Officer of Aramentis Biosciences. And this these guys are breakthrough technology. They are they are curing some of the biggest problems that uh, in neuroscience that, that people are facing right now, and I'm really impressed. All right, Gerald, uh, let's do this on this segment if we can. Walk me through the three medical solutions that you want to talk about today and tell our audience about them, how you got there, and, and where they're going. Sure. Uh, I'll be brief. So uh, the first uh, product that's going to be brought to market is a blood test for Alzheimer's disease called Limpro. Uh, this was originally developed at the University of Leipzig in Germany, and we brought it in in late 2012 as part of an in-licensing strategy in the diagnostic space. Mm -hmm. It helps differentiate Alzheimer's disease from other forms of dementia. And we are currently uh, working with Beck and Dickinson uh, down at their labs in San Diego to get the assay ready to be launched in the second half of 2014. The next solution uh, that we're working on is a drug candidate that is getting ready to start phase 2B trials for uh, the indication of Parkinson's disease, levodopa-induced dyskinesias. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what the dyskinesias are, those are the wild movements that uh, Parkinson's patients um, get after several years of being treated with the typical Parkinson's drug, uh, L-dopa, sometimes called cinnamon. And so that is obviously a huge market opportunity um, because that is treating L-dopa induced dyskinesias is the, is the key unmet medical need for physicians right now. It's the most pressing need. Uh, we have data from the Michael J. Fox Foundation that says it's a $750 million a year opportunity in the U.S. alone. And we believe that the drug that we're developing has the potential to be a best in class uh, and certainly better than what's currently out there in the marketplace. What's the name of the drug? So, part of the, the name of the drug is l Okay. Um, sir, uh, that same drug also has applications in adult ADHD. And we announced we have positive data in adult ADHD. We have positive data in Parkinson's disease, l induced kinesias. So we're very excited about, about that program, a huge market. The Alzheimer's blood test market, obviously, is enormous as well. It's a $200 billion a year uh, cost to the nation. And uh, we think the market for that exceed for the blood test exceeds five hundred million dollars a year, and we'll be launching that in the second half of this year. Finally, um, the last product that we're developing is uh, this molecule called MANS, M-A-N-S, that we discovered in house. It's a potential curative treatment for Parkinson's disease, uh, and we've also found that it has the potential to be a curative treatment for several other diseases all around this protein misfolding endoplasmic reticulum stress uh, mechanism of action of this compound. So the compound, this protein MAMP is something that you have in your body, something I have in my body, we all have it, and its natural function in the body is to help proteins fold properly under stress conditions. And this is a very important part of a lot of diseases. So what we're doing is we're giving this drug to the body um, earlier then the body can produce it on its own because of the disease or because of the injury. And by doing that, we give the body a better chance of overcoming uh, the insult, what we like to call filling the, filling the area over the curve, if you look at it from a drug standpoint. 
So that's very attractive. Again, this, you know, potentially cure Parkinson's disease. That's potential to uh, make a significant treatment uh, change of uh, function in this disease, retinitis pigmentosa, which is the lead application uh, because that's an orphan indication which has a number of economic incentives and can also be brought to market a lot faster. Those are the three primary product areas we're developing, and those are the areas in which we're developing them. Well, let me jump in there because the notes say that it does more than that because uh, you're also talking about Warfarin syndrome, diabetes, uh, isometric heart disease, uh, and then uh, we we mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to bring it out again, traumatic brain injury. Tell me about the uh, diabetes cure or, or the potential cure for diabetes. Right. So 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 endoplasmic retic- the function, the mechanism is called endoplasmic reticulum stress. Mm-hmm. And that is uh, involved in a whole host of diseases. So the way a lot of diseases work is there's a, an initial insult which sits somewhere on the top and somewhere down the chain of events of the disease it gets to the cellular level where there's this dysfunction at the level of the endoplasmic reticulum, the stress. So NAMP, this protein, acts by helping overcome that stress in the endoplasmic reticulum by improving folding of proteins. So this is something that you see in diabetes with misfolded insulin. Um, misfolded insulin gets clumped up in the endoplasmic reticulum of, of beta cells in the audience of Langerhans, and then ultimately these beta cells uh, die uh, because they have too much clumped up proteins. NAMPS, uh, our protein, is a, helps get rid of a lot of those clumped up proteins. So obviously we think that could be just a huge market opportunity. Um, we are uh, currently uh, have, they have uh, studies that are uh, moving forward where we should get some initial data if this is feasible for NAMS to be delivered uh, systemically, which is how it would have to be delivered in diabetes. So, it, you know, if those pan out, that's just a, a massive catalytic uh, because uh, beta cell degeneration is, is somewhat the holy grail in diabetes, just like protecting dopaminergic neurons is, is the holy grail in Parkinson's, which is something that we've shown in animals. We now need to show it in humans. This would be the same thing in diabetes. Uh, we've already shown in retinitis pigmentosa. So, uh, again, MAMF, you know, if MAMF works uh, in humans uh, in the same way it's working in animals, uh, we think this has the potential to be an EPO-like compound in terms of its commercial viability. And so what we focused on is finding the fastest path to market, and that's really orphans because uh, diabetes is a huge opportunity, but it's also going to take a lot of patience to really get through clinical trials. Whereas if you're working on orphan indications like um, retinitis pigmentosa or uh, Wolfram's disease, which has a very similar etiology to diabetes, you you can really get to market a lot faster, spend a lot less money, and, and deliver a lot more ROI for your shareholders. What would patients need to do to to get this into their system? How how would that occur? Well. Again, we're currently in the in the testing phase, so right. we're not we can't currently give this out to patients who would call it. Mm-hmm. So we're you know we're we're there are a number of obviously very strict FDA guidelines that we are following to ensure safety um, before well, we would start handing this out. But well, yeah. let me l- let me rephrase the question: Would this okay. end up being a a pill, an injection, a patch? How, how, how would how would somebody take it into the system to start the cure? Oh, there's a number of options. So if you're talking, so if we're talking about retinitis, this would be an injection into the eye, very similar to a lot of uh, drugs that are currently be del- being delivered into the eye, just like Regeneron's Alia, for example, for macular degeneration. So this would be exactly the same kind of treatment uh, for the eye as that. If we're talking about for Parkinson's, um, this would be something that would be injected into the brain. Uh, under a, a reasonably similar procedure to something called deep brain stimulation, which has gained a lot of interest in the field of Parkinson's. If we're talking about diabetes, this is likely something that would just be injected subcutaneously you know, into, 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 into your vein and, and get throughout your bloodstream. So that would obviously be the, the, one of the simplest forms. Okay. Of, uh, of administration. The, yeah, that's what I was trying to drive at. It's it's not like uh, you go in and there's going to be massive treatments like radiation or anything of that nature. This seems pretty simple and, and, and easy for the for the end user to, to get the cure. Right, exactly. All we need is for the protein to get to the cells of interest. If the protein can touch the cells, 
it'll have the activity uh, desired. Right. Now you've got research reports on your website. Uh, give us our, your website so our audience can follow up on this. Sure. It's at www.amarantus.com. That's A-M-A-R-A-N-T-U-S. Right. And your symbol A-M-B-S, right? Apple Mary Bravo Sam. That's right. A-M-B-S. All right. Joe, it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to have you back on the show to see what you've done in regards to you know wa- walking this through in a case study, see how, how this thing is progressing as we go forward. Well, thank you. Look, I mean, we're addressing markets. Uh, in the aggregate, in excess of $300 billion. And uh, certainly we think we have proprietary technology in each of them. And certainly in the case of Alzheimer's, uh, our diagnostic, uh, we don't see significant competition in the market that would affect where we're going because we really think we have something very special here. So near-term, Alzheimer's, uh, medium-term, we have a phase 2B drug in altobazine and long-term MAMP. Uh, which has the potential to to really just change the game as far as medical science. All right. You made my day. Thank you so much, Gerald. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, Gerald Kamishiong, President Chief Executive Officer, Amarantus Biosciences. A-M-A-R-A-N-T-U-S dot com is where you find them. A-M-B-S, the stock symbol. Definitely look them up. All right, coming up. Oh, and by the way, special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their media and PR support. All right, coming up next, we're going to be coming back with Michael Stern, Creative Director of Stonehenge. We're going to talk about some real estate on the way back. We'll be right there. <laughs> 